went from under a million parts to uh, now we're doing about 5.2 a year. When you look at Swiss machines, I see a lot of Swiss machines and big old horizontals. They have 35 Swiss machines total, all citizens income. All the horizontals, are they all at Matsura? Uh, we have Matsura horizontals, we have DMG Mori in the other building as well, um, and, and a lot of vertical five axis. We have uh, 21 MAMs total, uh, all 35 feet except for two that are the 52 feet. Yeah, so our actual number of hours per machine when I started versus where we are now is double, uh, double the out output in hours. For the, for the same number of machines. Awesome. So, um, and, but also we went from under a million parts to uh, now we're doing about 5.2 a year. How did you do that? Uh, I got a lot of good people really just embraced uh, pushing hard. You know, machines want to run. Being more efficient with uh, each tool pack, each exactly. tool, each end mill, exactly. every little every little crevice yeah, of everything. You know, I'm looking at how fast can we go. Yeah. Before we would make a part and if it ran, we left it. We didn't yeah. touch it. And now we look at it and we optimize, we look at different tools. Uh, we've got a lot of different tooling uh, manufacturers that are involved now before. Yeah, that's one of the reasons that we've talked in the past and I love how you, you love education and you guys are helping out the local college and yeah. now they're doing the Titans of CNC curriculum because you actually yeah. was like, hey, let's take this to another level and stuff. So I appreciate all that. Can you just easily explain a little bit about what you guys actually do? Every one of our products is involved in precision, measurement and or delivery of a fluid. So anybody that deals with fluids from a hospital, LabCorp, Quest Diagnostics, any of these companies that we all deal with, they're handling fluids, blood or DNA or Pepsi Cola, they are handling and are using our products to, to make their product better. So um, we're really in that space. So we're technically a medical device company, but there's so many companies out there that are using our products that have nothing to do with medical. Other companies that are using uh, blood samples to test for like pre-cancer okay. cells and all kinds of things that our machines are at the heart of. So during COVID, we were making machines that tested for COVID, but also helped develop solutions in COVID. Um, but that was just one of the things that we did during that time. Um, when I started, this area here was C-frame verticals. It had Haas machines. I could have a machine a run with one operator, and then that same operator can run two, three, four other machines, depending on the mix that's happening. One of the great things about this product for me is that the, these blue machines in this building, we have almost 2,000 different part numbers. And those 2,000 part numbers have programs, have tool lists. The machine has a really big tool changer. So I don't have to load a tool. I don't have to set a length offset. All the work holding is standard. It stays in the machine. So if I want to run one job, or I want to run 608 parts, I can do it in, in a few minutes, make that change. So it's really allowed us to be flexible. Things like this, so this seems simple, but this part is what they call a, a, a labware receiver. So there's all these little plastic trays that everyone designs, and none of the plastic trays are standardized. So every manufacturer, every company that wants to test has to have a different receiver for that plastic labware. And so we make hundreds of different variations of this part, same but different as the call. And we do all of it, you know, there's little side work here. It's not really true five axis. Making this on a C-frame vertical would be kind of a pain in the butt. And so now we, we don't have that problem. This horizontal was purchased before I was here and it's a great machine. Makino makes a great product. The problem with this machine, in my opinion, is that we, with horizontals generally, is there's a lot of time that goes into developing a fixture or a tombstone. And so that's why positional five axis is really been great for us. Even if you're only making one part at a time, you do have that one piece flow, but you don't have any development. You, you clamp it on a, you know, a self-centering vise, a shunk, a lang, fifth axis, one of those companies, and it's good and it stays. Um, and then if you want to move to a different part, you're ready to go. Uh, when we looked at it, there's about 12 steps to producing a fixture from buying all of the things you need, designing all the subcomponents, assembling it, machining it, before you even machine the product. And you got to machine the tombstone. You got to make, every, make sure everything's ready to go. We're actually moved almost all of our product out of this cell into the other cells in the other building. We'll show you. But this is a Kenna Metal Tool Boss that right. we use for storing all of our tools, tracking what's being used, and seeing where our expenses are. And then we move on what what where our problems are. Are we having issues with breakage? Are we having issues with over you know over consuming a tool? Or are there tools that are not being used? And so uh, when I started, almost every drill was high speed. So right now we have several thousands of tools in the toolbox that exist, partly because 
We are an international company. We do a deal in both metric and standard. So parts can have metric and standard threads or metric and standard dimensions, depending on how they go together or what they go to. This is just some of the small stuff we do, but it's pretty tiny. So this is actually a, a tip that goes on a plunger for a syringe. So we actually make a part that's uh, much smaller than this. This is actually a really big version of this. And so it goes on the end of a syringe and they call this a gas tight syringe. So most of our syringes, there's a, a stainless steel um, plunger and that plunger seals against the glass tubing. This one actually creates a seal that, that uh, allows gas to be extracted, basically collected in a syringe. We just got into building 13. This is our second building. It's larger than building three, but it has less machines because a lot of the machines are bigger. So in this area, we have a model shop. So we have programmers, these guys here are programming their parts, uh, doing fixturing, tooling, everything, getting set up, making a one or two or five part piece order uh, for a prototype or maybe a custom order that we get from a customer. The second half of the machines are production machines, producing a little bit larger quantities, usually about 25 pieces. Uh, all Haas machines, VF2 or VF4. And uh, most of them are newer, vintage, uh, maybe maybe no more than 10 years old, more like eight probably. We make this part in a horizontal, but there's a couple small things we do in the vertical because it was a better way to do that. Uh, easier to fixture, easier to handle. So we're just doing the finishing work here. And this is actually the, the main carriage for uh, an axis of a machine that we make. So there's essentially three rows in this building. You have the Haas machines and the prototype shop. You've got an, a few more Haas machines. These are routers uh, here. We've got two MAMs, then we have a couple or a four DMG Mori mill turns. And those machines are producing uh, parts that have shapes on odd sizes. Uh, over here, it's kind of pretty neat, I think. So we've got a really big chunk magnetic plate situation here where we load the part. It's a weldment. We set it down, we lock it with the magnet, it activates, and the part's done. It's fixtured, it's ready to go. We saw an incredible improvement by using these, this chunk product to, uh, to hold the part. And there's six platens, uh, they're all connected to one button. And because this is a really big machine, it has a seven foot by 12 foot travel, we can actually run one machine, uh, run machine one part, and then load and unload the other side. So we treat it like a pallet changer. We also have, uh, this machine has a limited amount of weight that it can carry. So we actually have uh, five ang we have uh, right angle heads that are Lindex Nikon, and we actually go and grab them like you would on a traditional router. And the reason we do this is we really wanted the biggest, heaviest duty right angle head that we can get after, because this is a seal part, and this is the most chip to make in, in plain, mild steel. Most everything is either stainless, aluminum, brass, bronze, and a whole bunch of plastics. Shunk magnet tables, yes! So over here we have two, we call these the Mega Mams. These are the 52V, so they're a larger pallet. And uh, the reason we went this route is some of our parts are bigger, but also we want to run higher volume per pallet on some of the smaller parts. So we actually developed our own pyramids. So you can see a part like this. Normally it would be multiple operations. We're doing this in, in two operations now, but it would be more like four or five. And there's end work. There's all kinds of work on the ends that we've got to do that we now do in two operations instead of one. This is actually a, a part for a syringe. So this is a larger bodied syringe, and this is the part that you'd actually use for your fingers when you're using the syringe. I actually used to uh, make a bunch of manifolds, desalinization pumps and all that. And I learned a ton about Dowering and stuff. So you have so many different uh, companies that actually make it, but we would only use one, and that's the Quadrant, because they actually do like an ultrasound to the material to check for porosity inside. Oh, yeah. And I think they were the only company to actually do that. And when you're dealing with fluid, that matters, right? Yeah. So oh, yeah. I'm sure you guys have some pretty stringent tests oh, that you guys do. We do, and, and uh, during COVID, it was a real bear. A lot of folks will say this is not hard to machine, but it's very difficult to get a good product. Yeah. Um, you machine it and it moves. So we actually have a resting process that we do where we machine it, we let it rest, we let it dry out a little bit, and then we go in multiple operations after yeah. that. I, I learned that um, you doing dovetails is really good. Yeah. Dovetail, and then you hold it very lightly, then you rough the heck out of it, you know what I mean? And just like barely clamp it, come back and finish yeah. it. Super good. So this is one of 10 N NHX 5000s. Um, this is a 21 pallet, 300 tool changer machine. The machines come from Davis, California, and the pallet changer and the tool changer come from Japan. We have 10 of these machines. I love this machine for a lot of reasons. One, it's lightning fast, very, very fast to accelerate, zero to two, uh, 20,000 RPM. I love the HSK 63A. It's been a really good thing for us. And a lot of tools and a lot of pallets. So I have 210 pallets in this horizontal work center. 
and uh, we can just pump out a ton of parts in this area. So this, this product is used to hold a syringe pump and it actually will use a syringe to extract fluid and then there's a valve here and it diverts the valve or the fluid wherever it needs to go. And we make this in two operations, 30 at a time on a horizontal. So it takes a long time for that pallet to, to be done, but a lot of unintended runtime. Your load time is maybe not even a minute per part. So you're getting hours and hours and hours um, of runtime with one load. So there, there's actually a, a lead screw that goes in this, and so this hole and this hole have to be very, very accurate. It has true position callouts. Uh, they're very tight, and there's a there's a shaft that goes in here, and as well as a lead screw. And this is a little actuator for the syringe. We make a lot of different variations of this. We have 35 injection molding machines that we own. This room has nine of those. We have several other buildings dedicated to just doing injection molding of the tips. And so it's a sterile environment. Those tips have to be exact. Uh, all of the machines have a massive amount of automation that's probably three or four times the size of the machine. And we inspect every single one of them with multiple cameras, multiple sensors, and then it actually packages it in a sealed container before the operator handles it. One other thing we did differently, when we, so when we moved to this building, we had a lot more options because the building was empty. And so all of these machines, all the big heavy machines, the Matsuras, the DMG Mori, uh, the four DMG Mori mill turns, as well as the 10, are all on foundation. So this foundation is 16 inches uh, deep, double, um, double supported, and they're, so they're all isolated from each other, and they're 16 inches uh, deep. So it allows the machine to perform very, very good, and we don't have to worry about tolerance changes and things like that uh, based on temperature or whatever else. So you guys already know, Pete sold me my first four machines back in the day. He came over to head up distribution uh, for Titans of CNC. I told everybody, I hired the best this whole area you had for 30 years. 30 years. And, and it's like all Northern these Nevada. different customers and yep. stuff like that. So, yep. and you were like 87% market share. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. So since I'm going to say probably since 1999, 2000, 87% market yeah. share. And, Love I, and, the area. and it has a lot to do with the man, oh. the service. Take How care much of you your customers. Yeah, that's right. Take care of your customers and or have somebody interest, else right? will. That's yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You're always a fan. I love but it. But when you look at all of these machines, you pretty much sold them every single machine in everything here. Everything but that's not a citizen, pretty much everything that's in here, yes, we put in here. And uh, all the Matsuras, Hazes, there's a lot of other buildings. These guys did it right. Phil is an amazing guy. Without Phil, I could sell the machines, but the way he implemented it and did the uh, efficiencies of all the parts they run, knocked down the park. Yeah. The guy's amazing. Earlier, we were talking about like when you actually bought a bunch of these machines and you made big purchases. And people were like, wait, ah, that's not real. You know what I mean? Because right. you're like, oh, I'm just going to buy like 13 of them at the same time. 13 monster machines, like yeah. millions and millions of dollars and stuff. And, uh, but it's because you guys have your own product. So you're yeah. just like, hey, we need to increase. We want to, you know, do this and that. And what do you guys say? Did, what did you say? You, it was like, you spent 50 million and it increased by 400 million, something like that? Yeah, so we went from, in, when I started, we were in the 200 uh, million revenue uh, for this site, for, for this, this site. For headquarters. Yep. And um, we've spent uh, probably a little bit over 50 in terms of product machines. We spent more on infrastructure, buildings, electrical. Yeah. But um, and we were we, we topped out at over 600 um, nice. in a few years. So awesome. in terms of uh, production, we went from under a million parts in 2017 to in 2021, 2022, we did uh, 5.1, 5.2 million each of those years. Yeah, that's awesome. So it's it's easy to just say, oh, I'm going to go buy you know 50 million dollars worth of machines, but there's a lot that comes with that. And you have to have the mindset, like I'm always talking about like, oh, there's levels to the game because, you know, bringing in one machine and then, you know, rigging it and, and putting electrical and air, and that's one thing. But when you bring in an entire series of horizontals, five axis machines, yeah. all that, like it's a whole nother ball game. So it's great because somebody like you, you have to think and you take on that challenge and then it all rests on your shoulders, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, there was a, a celebration uh, quickly followed by panic. Yeah. after we got the approval to buy and uh, it was really easy we, you know, we did the map on how many parts we were behind we were we were behind when i started the machine shop was behind yeah. and we were the reason why the, the the factory and the company was not making sales okay. because we couldn't get delivery yeah. and so uh we quickly turned that around and then on top of that we're also insourcing so uh, we have a factory in switzerland but we're actually making product that we used to buy from them um, and in every case, I can't think of a single example where we're not doing it better than they do. Awesome, man. And just with paying attention, asking the right questions, and uh, you know, doing it the, the American way. That's awesome. Oh. Aluminum chips, plastic chips, steel chips, 
mill chips, lathe chips, drill chips. Chips. I got you. You get a chip. You get a chip.